We went down the I-90 corridor, literally went to Syracuse, went to U all the way down to Utica, and we found this family scrapping. Everywhere. Legally scrapping, if you will. So it's not just Monroe County. It, 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 was, it was literally down the I-90 corridor. We stopped at Utica. Welcome back, friends. Uh, believe it or not, episode 91 of uh, Behind the Badge here at the Monroe County Sheriff's ba Office. My name is uh, Todd Baxter. I'm the sheriff of Monroe County, about four and a half years of doing this, and then another almost 35 years in law enforcement total. You know, we have we have people, I call them serial larcenists, that are out there just committing crime after crime after crime. Uh, larcenies, stealing other people's products, if you will, and refusing to stop, and we cannot detain them. Uh, and sometimes it's addiction. They may be out of control. Other times it's just pure greed. Um, and, and with that subject, we just did a podcast here uh, last last week on um, on these serial larcenists, and in particular on catalytic converters, and the conversation came up, well, if the scrappers would just stop buying them, people would stop stealing them. Uh, so with that, we decided to have a conversation with someone that's been in the industry for years and years of scrap metal. That's uh, Mr. Robert Frank. Rob, how are you? Very good, thank you. Good. Robert, Bob, what do you want to be called? Bob. Bob, perfect. So, Bob, how many how many years have you been in the scrapping industry and in the family? Uh, I'd say over 50. Wow, that's incredible. And you're third generation. Correct. So I think you know a little bit about the metal industry. Um, yes, I'm, yeah. I'm still learning. <laughs> still learning. Everybody is, right? Absolutely. And then your son, I believe, is coming My in. My son is, yes, he's right behind me. What, it's an amazing thing, you know, as I, as I got to realize uh, the problem with catalytic converters as sheriff and then started dealing into, uh, diving into the metal industry. I, just conversations between you and I have been so profound, so so much learning to be done here. The Go back to the catalytic converters. You know, one of the arguments we get in all the time uh, is is if scrapyards would stop buying catalytic converters, criminals would stop stealing them. And let's just set the table here. Right now in, in Monroe County, we've had over a thousand catalytic converters stolen just this year. And you, for to, to let everybody know, you you sit on a, a task force we put together not too long ago to to educate us, right? In this whole thing, we can sit back and throw darts at each other, right? But as, as we're trying to do with this this episode, is get people educated first of what's really occurring in the metal industry and also what's current occurring with the catalytic converters. Uh, so I've really enjoyed learning from you. I've enjoyed you sharing with us, whether it's car dealers, part of the consortium, it's law enforcement, insurance companies, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's rich. It's very. It's a rich conversation. Uh, so let's go back to, you know, the catalytic converter. So I got a, we got a picture here. That's a catalytic converter. People have heard of them, I'm sure, by now. But if you didn't know what one was and you never snuck underneath your car to look at it, what, why'd they come about, first of all? And then we'll talk about what's it, in them. To minimize air pollution. Right. So if we go electric... You won't have, they won't be around anymore. Right. <laughs> so this is all the, the, the combustible engine creating it, it air clean, pollution. Yes, this it, is filtering it some filters of it out. filters out the exhaust. It keeps our air cleaner. Correct. So it, it looks like a piece of junk. It doesn't look very uh, very expensive. It doesn't look like it's worth anything. It's rusted like well, the muffler and everything else. So it, so what about that? That The outside is, is a, a magnetic, a 400 series stainless. Okay. Very low value. It, gotcha. That ends up going and it, it gets shredded and remelted. But the, the valuable items, there's three items inside that converter, which is rhodium, palladium, and platinum. Okay. Those are precious metals. There's Think common metals, precious metals. All right. And so those are very expensive. Everybody knows platinum. They think, oh, that's probably gold and platinum are the most expensive. No. Really? Palladium and rhodium is the most expensive of all. Of More the, than gold? These, yes. What we think? Many really? times, yes. Yeah, wow. Think about that. Yeah. That's fascinating. And those three precious metals are inside this filthy, rusted thing Correct. underneath our car. Yes. Yeah, somebody designed that, and so it's, they need to get it back. There's only so much of their precious. There's not a lot of it around. That, that's why it's so valuable. Right. So you need to recycle. You need to recycle those three precious metals out of used, dirty catalytic converters. You can create that into a good it, metal it, again. When you melt it over, it's like it came out of the ground, brand new. That's amazing. That's, again, I love this education part of this. So, so with that being said, this, again... Appearance is one thing, the precious metals that are in here. So what, what would a, if you don't know this, it's not a quiz, but what a, what would a brand new catalytic converter cost me if I was going to put a brand new one on my car? Do you have, Probably two, three thousand dollars. Because those precious metals inside there, right? Right. Let alone then you look at a, at a ring. <laughs> you say, right. what's gold? Why? Well, that's everybody's, oh, of course it's a thousand dollars for a ring is nothing. Yeah. 
Yeah. But you got metals in here worth more than a gold. I'm correct. Right. That's all right. So, so the, the, the million dollar question we get all the time. All right. So if the scrap yards would, these are being stolen by the thousand, right? If the scrap yards would stop buying them, the criminal element would stop stealing them. Uh, so if why, there was gold in something and a scrap guy didn't buy it, that gold has a value. Someone is going to seek it out and buy it. And buy it. So they'll be, you create a, a like a black market or something that people are going to sell them because it has value. Right. Right. That anything that has value, people are going to. That's what they're trying to get money out of to buy whatever, whether it's drugs or, or just for money. It, it's that you can't stop that from being because if people need it, they're going to offer more money. If the, the harder it is to get it, that's what creates the fluctuation the value, in pricing, right? supply and demand. Right. A principle of economics. Yes. Simple as and And so you, you, you take these metals, I'm going to steal them. They're precious metals. The value of them has gone up significantly in the last couple of years. Because it's, when, it it's, when it's hard to get a hold of, they up the price. The price is up, right? Economics 101. Yep. So with that being said, so we have, let's say in Monroe County, we have 10 scrap yards just for our discussion, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a criminal. I'm going to go out and cut that for the saws off. Probably take me a minute. Get that off and in your car, possibly. I'm going to take it somewhere. So all the, all the scrap yards in Monroe County say, no, we're not buying any more Cadillac converters. So what? Then they go to the next county. So what? Eventually, somebody is going <laughs> to buy it. going to buy it, right? Right. So then you get a, a middleman who does the transportation. He buys them and he takes, takes his profit out. But you can't stop it. Yeah. Because supply and demand. Correct. Right? Yeah, it's a principle of economics. We've been trying that in the reverse with drug trades for years, right? I mean, if we just shut off the drug supply, as long as there's a demand, right? Right. Um, and and I, that's the point I, I learned a lot because I, would, you know, at first I'm I'm just like everybody else. I, I'm just going to go to my scrap yards in Monroe County, declare I'm the sheriff, and they need to stop buying catalytic converters today. What we found is that's not we we have one family here in Monroe County. And uh, we've arrested them several times. It's a whole different subject, this repeat offender thing with criminal justice. And uh, we're going to address that, hopefully, in our, with our legislators. We've been screaming. But where I was going with that is we did a point-in-time survey of catalytic converter thefts in Monroe County. And one of the things we found is catalytic converter thefts in Monroe County are underreported by a third. That means almost a third, probably more, of the people that have their vehicle damaged aren't reporting to law enforcement for one reason or another, insurance, usually or, insurance. or they take care of their self or whatever. Yeah. But the other thing that we found very profound is, so we looked at you guys, right? We looked at scrappers here in Monroe County. What's up with you guys? Are you being honest with it? Are you being truthful? Are you, I'm a cop. That's what I do. And, and so we, our, our hypothesis was just like you're saying. So if, if we did everything right in Monroe County, they're still going to take it to Erie County. They're still going to take it to Cattaraugus County. They're still going to take it somewhere. They'll take it to New Jersey. If, if, the, if, the, if, the, if it's worth money, they're going to take it somewhere. It'll go to California, if no, wherever. It doesn't matter. It's just right. a, the transportation issue. So our point in time survey with this family, this repeat offender family that I'm very pissed off about, they just we, I cannot detain them. We've arrested them probably nine times since the last January. Uh, thousands of dollars of damage. We went down the I-90 corridor. Literally went to Syracuse, went to U all the way down to Utica, and we found this family scrapping. Everywhere. Legally scrapping, if you will. So it's not just Monroe County. It, it, it was It was literally down the I-90 corridor. We stopped at Utica. I mean, we couldn't go any further. It was taking man hours I'll, and man I'll, hours. I'll give you another fact. If yeah. we were offering, say, a converter in Syracuse is worth $250, and all the dealers in Rochester were paying $150, mm -hmm. they are not going to be brought to Rochester. They're going to Syracuse. Yeah. Because yeah. it's paying more money. So. Sure. It, it's it's amazing. So, what? So you, you let's let's be frank, right? Uh, no pun intended with your name. <laughs> with the there's an industry, right? And you guys have some control over it. We have some control over it. Law enforcement, right? We all have a part to control the criminal element of this, not the legal element. And I think everybody just heard how how important you guys are to the whole economic structure of our community, let alone the manufacturing community and everything. But with that being said, so what are you guys doing? With scrap at the scrapyard, what what are you guys trying to help control the theft of these things? We've already talked about the economic part, and they're going to go down to I ninety anyways. But I mean, you guys do some proactive stuff. It's not like you're sitting back just taking everything in. We we participate in leads online. That's huge. And again, it's just communication. I, I think when you came, if you uh, when once you understand that we no, my my boss does not want to buy stolen material, mm -hmm. and again he's. He's a, a good businessman, but and how do you know when things are stolen? That's right. again, I would have to be a detective, and I'm not. So that's where you guys come in. 
Yeah, if you're looking at the picture, you, you can't declare that thing stolen or not because legitimate converters come into your business all the time. Correct. I mean, that's what people you guys are realize. wrecking cars. Sure, you're wrecking cars. Your cars got totaled. You we buy just... from dealers who who buy from other people. We're not again. It's not that we buy them. We're buying the metal inside. We're buying rhodium, palladium, and platinum. Right. right. Converter is just a name. Yeah. You're buying the metals. Yes. And, and they come in for a lot of legitimate reasons. Your car is totaled. You're not going to throw that very expensive metal away. You'd obviously cut it off yourself. And or, come and then it. sometimes they, and they get damaged. Right. That's a good way to put it. And, and obviously, if you got someone, because I know, I know you personally, you got someone walking in with, with 10 of these things, I've gotten phone calls. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm, I'm getting phone calls personally. Like, hey, we got this guy. You might want to come look at him. Uh, but leads online, That's that. Uh, we just kind of skimmed over that. That's a, a computer database we use in law enforcement. When, when uh, scrapyards that participate, and, and you do, that's phenomenal. You know, when someone comes in and sells a, a catalytic converter to you, you, you put that information. Todd Baxter walked in this date and time, sold me a catalytic converter, sold me two catalytic converters. And we know every patrol officer can tell by their from their car computer that Todd Baxter was just in there scrapping a catalytic converter. So if I'm down the street taking a report, uh, it's pretty. It's getting easier to put those two and two together, uh, as we call them, clues but in police work. But if everybody's not participating, right. that's the problem. And it's frustrating with the sheriff. Uh, yeah. we, we mentioned this consortium I'm putting together. We've got every scrapyard in Monroe County sitting together. Uh, and almost all of them are going leads online. That's great. Uh, the governor just passed a new law. Hopefully we're going to get some... Uh, um, input into that law to force people to use leads online. But as you said, if Wayne County is not using leads online, <laughs> right? if Ontario County is not using they, leads online. And the path of least resistance. Exactly. Economics 101. So, you know, I just wanted to share with folks, first of all, I think you're just a wonderful person. I think you got so much knowledge. I, I appreciate your family's history and the whole metal industry and, and educate me. I'm a history buff uh, and, and why we need these scrapyards to keep us, uh, you know, going economically, get our next metal products that we want you know, into our store so I could buy them. And, and, uh, and also what you guys are doing, what, what, what part you're playing in this catalytic converter. Um, it's, it's, I hopefully been interesting for people to listen for a quick segment here. Uh, and, uh, it's just, I, I want everybody to know that it, there's many facets to this whole catalytic converter problem. It's not just if the one segment would stop doing what they're doing and everything would be better. If that's true, we'd make it happen. <laughs> I would do that tomorrow. Yep. My job is to protect people's property. Uh, but anything you want to add before we, uh, no, I mean, again, if there, if you have any further questions, feel free to ask. I'm, yeah. I'm available to give you with the information that I have. Yeah, and I think it's people who understand that, you know, we formed a Cadillac Converter Task Force here in Monroe County. We have law enforcement. we got car dealerships. We have insurance companies. We have legislators. Uh, we have, I, I can't think of a, a functional group that we don't have, and we have the scrapping industry with us. Does that mean there's not a scrapping industry out there doing it wrong? Absolutely not. Yeah. It's, we're humans, right? But right. It, it means that at least we're challenging each other. We're pushing forward with legislation. We're pushing forward with a, a repeat offender standard. That's what I'm looking for, right? Uh, we're pushing forward with with industries that uh, that aren't doing it right, so they don't you know take your business away, legitimate business. And, uh, so I thought it was important to share. And uh, okay. always great to talk to you. Thanks for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a great day. You too.